Let's talk about half guard. When we say full guard, that means that I have both of my partner's legs trapped between my legs. When my partner tries to pass or when I choose to, if I only have one leg trapped, uh, we call that half guard. Now it used to be considered, and it still should be considered for folks that are new in their career, that full guard is always preferable to half guard. These days you have a lot of folks that are really good at the half guard, and so it may be that you become really adept at that and you play it. But for now, especially early in your journey, you should really get focused on going from half guard back to the full guard. So what we're gonna do in this video is show you how to go from a really bad half guard position to a more playable half guard position, and finally to the full guard. Now when I say a playable half guard, I need three things in order to make half guard worthwhile. So if you guys is trying to pass my guard, he's on his knees. See how I have one leg between, right? As opposed to two legs in front, I have one leg, I have one of his legs trapped. I need to be on my side, like I am, so I can move. I need to either have frames, these arms, so if he tries to smash me, I can block him, or I need to have an underhook. Those are the three most important things to make half guard playable. I, when I'm on my side, I can move. Um, if he flattens me out, I can't. If I control inside space with frames, or I can get out to his back with the underhook, then I can make some things happen. But if he has to get a hold of my head and gets a hold of my arm, smashes me, puts me flat on my back. This is really difficult. I'm actually going to have Elias put a little pressure down just so you can feel my voice change. It's not a lot of fun. This is not half guard. This is half mount. He's closer to mounting and passing my guard than I am to doing anything positive. So what we need to do is we need to get back to a playable half guard. You'll notice that I'm not controlling inside space. His arm is inside my arm. His head is inside my arm. And I don't have frames, so I can't control the distance. I need to get those two things back. So I'm gonna step on the mat here, as close to my butt as I can. I'm gonna bridge into him, and I'm gonna bring my frame inside. If I can bring my other frame inside at the same time, awesome, sometimes it takes more than one bridge. I'm gonna move my hips out, and put my knee right in front of his hip. Moving the hips out is just like a shrimping movement. And now, with my knee against his hip, if he tries to come forward, he can't. If he tries to control my face, I'm checking. And now I can move my hips because I'm on my side. So we've gone from a half mount to a playable half guard. But let's show that a couple more times with some details. So um, let's rotate this way. So pay attention to what my feet are doing first and then what my arms are doing. This leg, the one that's draped, turns toes down. A lot of times people will lock their legs here and that's not wrong, but it's not what I would like for you to do. Because if I lock my legs, for one thing, I'm probably gonna stay flat, and for another, it impedes my movement. And you always wanna be able to move when you're in an inferior position. So instead, I wanna turn my toes down so that now if he ass tries to get away, and she tries to pull away from me, I'm able to stay attached to him pretty much, right? And so this is worse than this. The other thing I'm gonna do with my leg, so I have this one leg draped and turned down. Now if he gets the head and arm control, <laughs> I'm gonna take this slip and bring it as close to my butt as I can with my toes on the mat, active toes. The reason I want it as close to my butt as possible is if it's far away, my bridge is not very powerful, whereas here, it can be pretty powerful. Last thing that I wanna do, I wanna take my bicep and hit him right about where his ear meets the rest of his head. The reason for this is, you see how his spine is straight? So if I try to bridge into him and he tries to push back, it's kind of a fight, right? And I hate fair fights. So instead, if I do this, I move him off one. So I want my bicep to aim right for his ear. If I get both frames at first, awesome. If not, no worries. I bridge again, shrink my hips out, swim. Last couple of details. Let's rotate a little bit toward the camera, facing camera. I'm not making grips here. I'm just resting my hand on his shoulder and checking his bicep. I want my pinky finger right where his elbow meets his bicep. The reason for this, we already guessed, right? If he tries to squeeze my face again, then I can block him. He tries to strike me, tries, and I can check, then I can check that. We always want to consider if there are strikes involved. And generally speaking, controlling inside space is good for both striking and for grappling. So last part of this technique. So we're in a playable half guard position. Elias isn't smashing us anymore. And if he smashes forward, he's actually going to cause himself more problems too, because he's going to drive right into my frame. So you see how my right hip is on the mat? What we're going to do is switch our hips with a shrimp motion. I'm going to step on the mat, or you can step on their hip if your physiology allows you to do that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my hips so that my right foot, my right hip, which is on the mat, is going to head for the air, and my left foot, which is headed for the air, is going to head for the mat. 
One more time. Step, shrimp. Extend, get right back to the closed guard. If you can't close your guard, it's always okay just to step on their hips and maintain distance that. Without Elias in there, it looks just like a shrimping motion, right? Where we're on our side in the half guard, step. You can see how we square up for the full guard. So that is how we get from an unplayable half guard to a playable half guard to a full guard. For now, uh, if you're a white belt, really focus on getting back to that full closed guard. But like as your, your jiu-jitsu starts to grow and you expand your game, it may be that you have a great time playing half guard. And we'll show you some techniques that you can do from half guard as part of this fundamentals curriculum as well.